going to take a moonshot to Giza for the purpose of looking at the Great Pyramid offsets. Okay, so if we're looking south from the north side of the Great Pyramid, uh, we could ask why, as we have before, why is that original door offset? So if you take the 280 cubits up the center of the pyramid, the door is offset 14 royal cubits to the east. Again, why is that offset? And there's another major offset in the Great Pyramid. If you look, uh, on the, go on the east side and look west, here's a cross section of the Great Pyramid chambers, the King's Chamber, Chamber Queen's Chamber, Grand Gallery. And so again, uh, on the east side looking west, we see that the very center of the pyramid from this side goes right through the Queen's Chamber. And then offset to the south is the King's Chamber again. Why the offset? We want to look at uh, apogee when the moon is farthest from the earth and perigee when it's closest, where it appears bigger. Okay, so uh, I did some uh, measuring and looking things up and found some interesting things here. Now, you've seen before on this channel, we've shown how the merger of the five and six, the pentagon and the hexagon, the merger of heaven and earth, where it joins together, that defines the entrance of the Great Pyramid. But here, look, the moon's apogee and perigee also define the original entrance of the Great Pyramid uh, looking from the north side, uh, south. Actually, this is actually looking on the south side, looking north, okay? So if you take one diameter to be the apogee, then uh, if it's 1.128 at perigee, and look, they both join together at that offset entrance. Here it's offset uh, you know, to the other side because we're looking on the south side of the pyramid down to the north. But again, you can see that apogee and perigee define that original entrance. Interesting. Now, I did, uh, I gave myself a little leeway because you know when you do this kind of work, you always have to have a plus or minus, you know, how far off you were. And so I, I, I calculated what, you know, what those were. And I, you know, I can, I'm fairly certain that this is an accurate rendition here, that apogee and perigee define that. Okay, but uh, let's look at the full base ratio. Now, now we're, we're again uh, on the north side of the pyramid looking south. Okay, so will the 1.128 ratio of apogee to perigee hold if we go uh, take, take the two circles and go from vertice to vertice? Okay, so here is the offset line that the original entrance is on right there. Okay, so here's apogee. And that uh, takes 207 of the 220 cubits, which is halfway to the pyramid. It's the middle of the pyramid. And then perigee, 1.128. And again, those join right at the original entrance. And this time, again, we've come from the outside of the pyramid. So it's incredible, you know, that the uh, moon's apogee and perigee divine the, the offset. Okay, now let's look uh, west. We're on the east side of the pyramid. Now looking at a cross section here. And so you can see these circles. The apogee has got the diameter through it there. Now this is also apogee right here. And uh, you can see it's raised up a little bit from the other one. It's, and it's put inside of the circle that represents perigee. Now this is interesting. The apogee circle goes right through the center of the queen's chamber. And uh, it also goes through the top of the king's chamber. So again, rather amazing. Okay, so moon, apogee, and perigee define the offset of the king's chamber from the, uh, on the east-west axis that we see on the east side now, looking west. All right, so there's apogee, and there's perigee, and look, where their tangent, it goes right through the sarcophagus, right through the relieving chambers, and to the center of the gable of the king's chamber. I just think that's so amazing. And then that got me thinking, what about the hexagon pentagon? Does that also define this uh, offset from the east-west axis? And sure enough, you can see, you know, you can see where the queen's chamber is. That's the center of the pyramid. The merger of the hexagon and pentagon, the meaning of life, the point where heaven and earth meet together, that goes right through the center of the king's chamber. Amazing. All right, so thoughts on what we've just looked at here. First, let's look at the moon, apogee, and perigee at the original entrance. Okay, um, so, you know, the, the, the moon, this has to do with the appearance of the moon. And so sometimes it looks bigger and sometimes it looks smaller. So it's kind of chimerical. In other words, the moon is, can fool you. And so this says to me that you, you have to use 
judgment. You've got to have some horse sense. You have to look through the illusions and figure things out to be able to find the right way to enter in. Okay, so the moon is shadowy. Okay, it's appearances, but, uh, you know, so that, that's my thought on that. Now, what about the Pentagon hexagon at the Great Pyramid entrance? We've talked about this before. So basically, you know, that the, the merger, that common side of the Pentagon and the hexagon symbolizes the merger of heaven and earth. And so if you're going to enter in, you know, enter recognizing that you're offset, imperfect. That's the key to entering in. That's what I've suggested that means. And then if we look at the moon, apogee, perigee in relationship to the king's chamber offset. Now, again, when uh, up above, we looked at the entrance in relationship to apogee and perigee. But here, we're not at the beginning. Really, the king's chamber is the end. This is the end of the journey. And so th this apogee and perigee also defines that. And so, again, thinking of the, you know, shadowy nature of the moon and that the fact that there's an apogee and perigee says, will the real moon stand up? Here's two different representations. Which is it? So this would say to me, you know, be very careful about, uh, you know, your teleology, about your, your final view of things. You know, things can be chimerical, but rightly put together. You know, if you, if you use that, uh, that special sense, you can make it to the end of the journey. All right, now, the Pentagon, Hexagon, King's Chamber offset. Now, what's so incredible about this to me is I just saw this today. Because I was studying the apogee and perigee, I got to thinking, why don't I put the hexagon and pentagon merger over this side of the pyramid? I always have done it from the north to define the entrance. But now, look, it, too, lines up directly with the king's chamber. And this just, you know, talks to me about all the, the entire Egyptian cosmology. You know, the, the fascination with, with the age to come, the negative confession, I haven't hurt my neighbor, I haven't stolen, you know, I haven't abused anybody. Uh, the idea of the, the weighing the heart uh, against the feather of truth, the judgment of Osiris, mummification, the jed pillar for resurrection, making it to the end. That's what that's about. You know, the Great Pyramid, you, you enter in, you're going downhill, but then you head up when you get to the first ascending passage, you go through the Grand Gallery, then through the Antechamber, and then finally into the King's Chamber. But the thing about the King's Chamber, when you're at this point, you know, you are still, even though you're in the King's Chamber, you're still off-center. So I was thinking about this today because I just saw this for the first time. The king's chamber, in a sense, would mean you've reached the age to come. You, you've God's throne, the place, you know, where, where eternity begins. The Alpha and the Omega is in here. And you're still not centered yet. You have to first go through the humbling of going through that antechamber. And then, after that, you've got to head from there over to there. And then when you do make it to the sarcophagus, you are, again, at the center. So you entered in crooked, but you made it to the king's chamber, which I think is the age to come. And so what that says to me is the spiritual life we seek and its ultimate fruition in a, in a life at one with the universe, with God, with our fellow man, comes ultimately and is perfected in the age to come. So don't think of yourself too highly too quickly. All right, thanks for watching. Let's go down and the shot